So how did I go from door-to-door -door sales agent to a successful creative career to Photoshop? Dedication, working smart and persistence. When I first got started, I never thought of myself as a designer or a creative person. I didn't even know how to draw. But I saw companies were looking for people who could create awesome website designs in Photoshop. As I started dabbling with these projects, I quickly realized that designing is not about being talented or artsy. Instead, it's about following certain principles and paying attention to certain details. In this next activity, I'll show you how these principles work with a real-life project so you can easily apply them on your own projects. Here we have a deconstructed website. Well, the top part of one, with elements thrown all over the place. Your job is to assemble these components into a good-looking project. You'll see you don't have to be artsy to figure it out. After that's done, as a bonus, I've slipped in three subtle mistakes and I want you to do your best to spot them. Look for something that feels off, that doesn't look quite right, and make a note of that. At the end of the clip, I'll reveal the mistakes, but I want you to find them yourself. To help you out, here are three design principles that you need to apply. Alignment, legibility, consistency. For the first task, you have to use the selection techniques you've just learned. I suggest you start with a background and place it in a way where we don't have any empty pixels on our canvas. This is what this checkered background represents. Transparency. That was easy enough. But how about the rest of these items? My advice is you think about any classic website that you visit every day. Where is the logo typically placed? Top left, of course. Control click the white logo and move it somewhere around this region. How about the main menu? Grab it and move it here. Again, nothing fancy about it. The vast majority of websites use this layout. These elements aren't easy to see though, but we have this rectangle that gives us a more appropriate contrast. Grab it through the control click technique and move it up. Use Photoshop snapping action to position it just right. Make sure the stacking order of these layers makes sense. As you can see, what we previously learned has immediate application here. Towards the point of attention to detail, the logo and main menu should be centered vertically in this rectangle. While you could approximate it, that would go against the alignment principle, which says everything needs to be laid out with precision. This in turn balances the design. It makes it pleasing to the eye. Photoshop has a lot of tools that can help you work with precision. In this case, we'll use the alignment tools and they're available if A. You have the Move tool active and B. You have at least two elements selected. Right now, we only have one layer selected, the logo, and obviously they're not lit up. So let's use the Control shift click technique to grab a second layer. Focus on the Layers panel. Notice we have the background selected as well as the logo. Now the alignment tools are available in the options bar. Click on Align Vertical Centers, that's this icon right here, and that does the trick. Though the background may move a little, we can fix that in a second. Repeat the process for the main menu. First of all, you should deselect the logo. Again, Control shift click Next, grab the main menu. With these two elements selected, use the same command. Align Vertical Centers. And just like that, we've completed our header. Well, you might have to select all three elements and move them around a bit, but that's why you practiced your selections through the previous exercise, right? It's a matter of dexterity and patience. Moving down, let's handle the title. Where do you think we should place it? Well, the center of the canvas may work, but if you look at this text layer, you'll see it's left aligned. Because of that, we'll left align the title too. Again, the principle of alignment comes into play. When you move it towards the left side, you'll notice Photoshop will automatically try and help you align it with the logo. These pink lines are called smart guides, through which Photoshop suggests how you can align various elements on the canvas. They're not bulletproof by any means, it's just a proposal from Photoshop. This is ideal because these imaginary vertical lines make the website flow much better. It's one of those principles that can immediately be applied in any other project. 
With this layout established, all the other pieces fall into place. These three lines should be left aligned with the logo and the title. And of course, the same thing goes for the button. The thing is, you've seen this layout on countless websites. There's nothing revolutionary here. But web design doesn't have to break any norms. We're looking for the solid, well-rounded design. We have design principles for a reason. They keep us on track. And just like that, we've completed the first part of our assignment. But what about the mistakes? Please pause the video if you haven't had time to identify them. In the next minutes, I'll reveal them, but it's no fun if you don't participate. So please, last chance, pause the video and find three design mistakes. Okay, let me show you the three issues I intentionally included. The first mistake is the fact that Find Out More is not placed correctly inside the button. It's actually pushed towards the bottom. If we zoom in, hotkey Z, and we use the marquee tool, hotkey M, we can see the value is 29 pixels. That's the amount of space at the top part. If we move down and we measure that, you'll see we only have 25. So that's a 4 pixel difference. This doesn't follow the alignment principle. So that's the first mistake. It's not a big one, but still it's noticeable. Now if you zoom back out with Ctrl-1, you can see it much better. Next, the second mistake. That's the amount of space in between these three lines. This goes against the principle of legibility which means the text is difficult to read. This is a very common mistake. What you have to do is use the character panel and click on this field to adjust it. I like to use the following bulletproof formula. Font size, in this case 22 pixels, times 1.5. That would be 33 here, but I'll ramp it out to 34. I'll show you how that looks like in a moment. Now, for mistake number 3, this is a bit harder to spot. My guess is that most people overlook it. The issue is with the main menu. The distance between the last two items is not the same. Actually, it's precisely two space bars short of all the other ones. The design principle is called consistency. And because this space is different compared to all the other ones, the principle is not applied correctly and subsequently something feels off. Here's how you can test it out. I'll zoom in through the zoom tool, again hotkey Z. Now I'll enable the type tool by hitting T. Next I'll click here. While holding down the shift key, I'll tap the right arrow key several times so I can count the number of empty spaces in between these two. And that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's a gap of 7 empty spaces. I won't bore you with checking all the other ones, instead I'll do this. I'll use Ctrl C to copy this empty space. You don't have to follow along by the way. Just make sure you understand my point. Next I'll select the following gap like so. Now when I paste to Ctrl V, if there's any difference, the text layer should change. If not, that means the distance is identical. Let's hit Ctrl V and C. Ok, no change, so this means it's fine. Let's do the next one. Select it and paste with Ctrl V. No change. And now for the last one. There you go, it moved. Did you notice? Let me hit escape. Again, did you notice the difference? If not, let's count it out. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 spaces versus 7 in these other ones. That's a lack of consistency. If you decide on a certain value, you have to stick with it throughout your design. That's the consistency principle. These are the three mistakes I've intentionally included. You don't have to correct them yourself, so please don't worry about the process. Just so I won't leave you hanging, here's the correct version. Everything is perfectly aligned. This is why you don't have to be creative or artsy. You need to pay close attention to all these small details and follow certain design principles. And of course, you need to work fast by practicing, especially things like selecting layers from the canvas. Over the last few years, I've competed in hundreds of web design contests. Through my speed and attention to detail, I've won many of them and increased my earnings far more than I could ever imagine as a sales agent. Even more importantly, 
After my first few wins, I realized I could make a living out of Photoshop. In that moment, something inside me clicked. Suddenly, I had all the confidence in the world because I knew I could turn a blank slate into something special. Making mistakes and encountering obstacles is all a part of this process. If you can learn from your mistakes and keep practicing, your results will inevitably come.